Hello, and welcome everyone to the Intrepid Museum's live virtual programming. Thank you so much for joining us for our program today, Flying in Style. My name is Alicia, and I'm an educator at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City, and I will be your host for this program. Just as a reminder, though, our museum's live streams are free, and if you would like to support us in delivering this exciting new content, please do click on the link that you can find in the comments or in the description. So feel free to use the chat today to say hello and let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know if you've ever been to the Intrepid Museum before. And of course, if you have any questions, you can put them there too. So today we are going to be talking a little bit about planes and more specifically about the artwork on some of the planes that we have on display at the Intrepid Museum and what they represent, how designs of airplanes are kind of like sports teams too, believe it or not. But first, a quick recap of our museum for those of you who may not be familiar. This is the Intrepid Museum. So our complex is located on the west side of Manhattan in the Hudson River. And our museum is actually housed inside of the historic World War II aircraft carrier, the USS Intrepid. On site, we also have a historic Cold War era submarine, the Space Shuttle Enterprise, and a British Airways Concorde. But as you can see in this picture, pretty big. Our ship is 913 feet long. It is so big, everyone, that if you took it and you stood it up on its end, it would be as tall as a New York City skyscraper. And it is so long that you could just about play three games of football on top at the very same time. But it's a fitting reference to say that because, of course, again, we are talking about teams today. Now, the Intrepid was built in 1943 for a very specific purpose. It was made during a time where we were fighting countries all the way across oceans. Now, at the time, we didn't really have the ability to launch our planes from way over here in America and then fly them all the way across the water to get over there. That would just take too much fuel, too much time. So we decided instead to create things like the Intrepid. Now, what do we call that? Tell me in the chat if you happen to know what type of a ship is the Intrepid? What is something that would let us do that with planes out on the water? What is a ship that carries aircraft? Hmm. Perhaps you could call it a aircraft carrier. <laughs> but not only that, you know, it is really great. It, it is a ship that would carry aircraft, but also it helps you to launch and to land them. So we like to say it's basically like a floating airport. So the Intrepid was in service during three wars. It was in service during World War II, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. And then after it was decommissioned, uh, and then it was rescued from the scrapyard, believe it or not, and turned into the museum that we know and love in 1982. And here we are today. Now, if you were to visit an aircraft carrier in service, something like this would not be an unusual sight. You might notice here that the crew members are wearing different colors, right? Well, if you've seen some of our other programs, you might recall that the color that they wear while on duty there has to do with their job. The red ones, for example, are ordnance workers. They help out with all the bombs and the ammunition, for example. Uh, the purple ones, of course, we uh, they have the nickname the grapes. Um, they help out with the fueling, right? But seeing all of these colors also might remind you of something else, where a bunch of people wear colors, they're on specific teams. So this leads me to my first question, everyone. Does anyone here like sports? What are some of your favorite sports teams? Let us know in the chat. So, uh, you know, I'll start us off. I'm from Pittsburgh, actually, originally, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I have to admit that my favorite sports team is, of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers and also the Penguins. They used to be a little bit better than they are now. But let's see what you all like. You can go ahead and tell us in the chat. And also, I do say, yes, John, uh, the Intrepid is open again. We are open seven days a week, and we are following all of the important CDC restrictions as well. So please do come hang out with us and feel absolutely safe while you're here, too. We'd love to see you. But I see you love the Miami Dolphins. Absolutely. That's a great team as well. I actually grew up in Florida, so Miami Dolphins fans were all around me at the time, too. Wonderful. So everyone, when we think about teams like the Steelers or the Dolphins, right, uh, and, and just sports in general, we can think about colors, right? 
again, fitting with this picture with all of those different colors on board. They used to call them the Skittles. Uh, so we can think about colors. We can think about logos and shapes and things that identify these teams, right? Uh, like, for example, if you are in the New York area, you might be a Mets fan. All right. So the New York Mets, their colors are blue and white and orange, which are actually colors that are found on the New York City flag as well. So kind of fitting, makes a lot of sense, right? So these are colors we can identify with, and we do that with planes too. So I want you to think about your favorite sports team. Think about what makes that team's branding kind of special, whether it be the colors or the logo or the mascot maybe, because believe it or not, we decorate our airplanes with something kind of similar as well. Now, Although, of course, um, you know, outside of thinking about the mascots and the logos here, we can look at something else. Uh, and that's the way that the airplane is painted to get us started. So there might be a very specific reason for why an airplane is painted a certain color. So looking at this big blue plane here, first of all, does anyone know what the name of this plane might be? I know we have to get a lot of repeat visitors for these programs. Anyone happen to know? Tell me in the chat if you know. Maybe uh, might have something to do with Maybe some Marvel movies that have been out lately. You know, a team of uh, superheroes. <laughs> this is, of course, the Avenger. So this is the oldest plane that we have at the museum. It is from World War II. Now, I want to point out this plane in particular because if, again, if you come to some of our other programs, you might know that this plane is camouflaged, believe it or not. While at sea, the Navy, of course, wanted to protect its aviators and its ships. And one way uh, that it could do this was by hiding it in plain sight using camouflage. Uh, and that means that there are different colors or patterns that would help something to blend in with their surroundings. Now, you might look at this plane and think, well, that is so silly. This plane is flying through the air. What is it going to blend in with? Well, it actually depends on how you're looking at it. If you are below it, so let's say you're maybe you're on a ship or even an airplane that's flying below it, and you look up, what color are you going to see? You're going to see white, right? You're going to see the underside of it. So you'll notice that white color there, and that's because it is going to blend in looking up with the clouds that are up above there. Then if you are flying right alongside of it and you look over, you know, it's going to blend in. Hopefully it's a nice day with that blue sky. And then if you are flying above it and you're looking down at it, well, it is going to blend in with what's all beneath you if you're flying around the ocean, right? In the middle of the ocean. It's that dark blue color while you're looking down at it. Now, many other planes also use the darker color to uh, blend in with the ocean. Of course, Navy planes. Um, and so it would help them to blend in with the water. But it's also important to note that some Avengers were painted a little bit differently, specifically ones that were flying in the North Atlantic. They didn't have that three shade of uh, blue thing going on there. They were actually gray. Now, why were they gray? Well, the weather up there way up in the north had a lot of gray clouds. So again, it helped them, you can see in that top picture there, to blend in with the sky area that much better. Although it's funny because in this picture, it's kind of flying against that blue sky there too. But it's gray because most often than not, it's a gray sky up there. Now, looking at these planes very closely here, you might also notice that they have something else in common, a particular marking. All right, so take a look at these three pictures. See if there's anything in common, a marking on the sides. All right, see if you can spot it. It's a particular logo. Did you catch it? Right here, you see those red circles. So does anyone know what you would call that? It's kind of like a logo on the side of an airplane. We can think of maybe the color of the airplane, like the jersey of the team. But the logo there, it helps you to know what team you're looking at or what country that they are from, what country they represent. So this particular marking here is something called a roundel. Roundel. Okay, so this particular roundel represents the United States of America, or at least it used to. But if you didn't necessarily get that at first glance, I don't blame you because it is, it does kind of look like something's missing from it, right? When you think of a country, often you might think of the flag of that country and specifically, right, the colors of the country. Kind of we talked about the Mets and the flag of the city, right? So looking at this, if this is the United States, it looks like we're missing a color, right? Something's missing. 
when I think of the United States, I think of red, white, and blue, right? We just had July 4th, red, white, and blue, patriotic everywhere, right? So of course you think, okay, well, where's the red? Well, that's a good question, right? Believe it or not, it used to have red on it prior to the one that we just saw there, which was just blue and white. So if you take a look at this picture, you can see what it used to look like. It was a blue circle with a white star and a red dot right in the center of it. So why does it look different in the other pictures that we just looked at? Why do you think the Navy removed the red dot from the roundel during World War II? Hmm. Remember at that time, Avengers and Hellcats, you know, were flying in the Pacific Ocean against the Japanese Navy. Okay, so thinking about the Japanese flag, what that looks like, well, the planes that they were fighting against look kind of like this. All right, this is a Mitsubishi Zero. These planes were flown by the Japanese. And if you notice the roundel on these planes, yeah, you'll notice it looks a lot like the Japanese flag, right? It's got a white, or a red, a white circle with a red dot right in the center there. So yeah, it's got an element that is perhaps a little similar and maybe a little too close for comfort for our American pilots too. So again, going back to, you know, the sports team idea, right? If you know you've got two teams with similar or even exactly the same colors, it's going to be a little bit confusing if they're playing each other, right? You know, imagine it's like a basketball game. Everyone's all mixed up, running back and forth everywhere. It's going to be a little bit confusing. You wouldn't really be able to tell the difference um, while they're running around at a glance, right? So in sports, to fix that, they usually have the home teams wear white jerseys with their colors as accents, and then the away teams wear their colored jerseys with their colors big and bold on them, right? So by doing that, it's a way to make it a little bit more clear at a glance and from a distance who is who. So with that in mind, America realized, yeah, yikes, we are fighting these planes that have a very similar feature, this red dot. If you're in a plane, you're scanning the horizon, your fingers on the trigger, you're, you know, you're nervous, you're anxious, right? And you're looking for a red dot. Oh, you might accidentally get a little too excited. And you might see an American plane with a red dot and accidentally shoot it because we also have that feature. So they thought, all right, too close for comfort. We got to change this up. So they got rid of the dot entirely, as you can see here, because they didn't want to be mistaken for those Japanese planes. And I think that's pretty smart. Eventually, though, they did add some red back into the roundel in the form of stripes, just like the stars and stripes on our flag, because later on, our planes were moving a lot faster. And, you know, it didn't really matter as much what colors or symbols were on them anymore. But we're going to get to that in a second. So this is what the more modern American roundel is looking like. Now, everyone, we are going to play a little game here about roundels before we move on. I'm going to show you some roundels, and I want you to guess in the chat for me what country it comes from. So you are going to see a roundel, and then you are going to see two countries' flags, all right? So if you think that roundel comes from the country's flag that's on the left in the chat, I want you to type the letter A. And if you think it comes from the country on the right, go ahead and type the letter B, all right? Here we go. So here is our very first roundel in our challenge. All right. So take a look at this. Think about the symbols, the colors, think of the significance that it, if it tells you anything about what country it might belong to, all right? And now here are your options. Do you think it is Australia? If so, type A. And do, or do you think it is New Zealand? If so, type B. So let me know in the chat which one you think. You can either type A or B or the, or the name of the country itself. I see we've got some answers already. We've got some people who think it might be Australia. All right. So again, looking at this roundel, looking at the symbol they chose to put on it, the colors of the roundel, every, all these little features, they mean something. And tell me if you think it is A, Australia, or B, New Zealand. I'll give you a couple more seconds there to put in those answers. We are getting a flood of answers of A here. A lot of people think in Australia. All right. Maybe you guys might know something about kangaroos, huh? <laughs> All right, my friends. So the answer is, you got it, Australia. 
So yes, you will notice that although we do not see the symbols that are on the flag, you know, we don't see necessarily the Southern Cross there with the stars or the Union Jack there. Uh, we do see, of course, the kangaroo. And we do know that Australia is very well known for its kangaroo population. Excellent job. But just for fun, this is New Zealand's roundel. All right. Uh, similar colors there. Similar flag also, actually. However, they've got a different symbol on there. Does anyone know what the name of that bird is? This is the national bird of New Zealand. Yes, Vashson, it is the Kiwi. It is the national bird, the Kiwi. And fun fact, New Zealanders' nicknames are actually the Kiwis. True story. So there you go. Slightly different, different countries, very close together geographically, uh, very similar flag, very similar colors, but again, slightly different there with the animal that is depicted in the roundel. Excellent. Let's do another one, everyone. So here we go. Here's your next one. Take a look at this. All right, so we see some yellow, some red, some blue, and a white star in the middle. All right, so soak that up. Let's see. Here are our options. Looking at these, everyone, do you think this roundel represents Zambia, the one on the left, type A, or Colombia, the one on the right? Go ahead and type B if you think it is Colombia. So A for Zambia or B for Columbia. So again, looking at the colors, looking at the shapes that are on there, the patterns, any sort of little clues that we might have there. And so we have some answers coming in. A bunch of people saying B here. All right, any last guesses? Get them in there before we move on. What do we think? A or B, Zambia or Columbia? All right, my friends, and the answer is Columbia. Pretty easy, again, I think, with those colors. Again, this time we can really see here that the color similarities with that Zambian roundel there didn't really make much sense there, but the Colombian one definitely uh, has those colors. But just for fun, here's Zambia. Again, you can really see the, uh, the matching there as well. It's got the same colors with the green, the red, the black, and the orange. And it's also got that big bird right there as well with its wings outstretched. So it does actually look quite a bit like the flag. All right, here's another one. Take a look at this one now, all right? All right, so looking at this one, all right, the different colors here, shapes, all these things. Do we think this is Ireland, type A, or Jamaica, type B? Hmm. The shapes that are in this roundel do not necessarily reflect shapes that are on the flag, but we can maybe take some guesses based on colors or other things like that. Do we think this is A for Ireland or B for Jamaica? What do you think? Got some answers coming in. Some more Bs. We got some people thinking Jamaica. All right, maybe another easy one, I guess, here. <laughs> All right, yes, the answer, of course, everyone, is Jamaica. Again, you could probably tell based on the colors, the green, the yellow, and the black. Although I will show you Ireland for fun. I think this is probably one of the coolest ones. Um, it, again, has the colors of the Ireland flag, the green, the white, and the orange. And it's also got that cool swirly pattern, kind of evokes like a Celtic knot that they're so famous for as well. I really like this one a lot. Uh, Bash says, that's awesome. It is awesome. I really like this one. All right, here's another one. Oh, now we're getting a little bit different with the shapes here. Okay, so we are looking at some boxes, kind of a checkerboard pattern here with like a border around it. We got red and white. All right, so we're looking at this one. Now, do we think this one is Poland, type A? Or do we think this one is Canada? Type B. All right. What do we think? And shout out to Teddy, who is six and had their Zoom birthday at the Intrepid. Wonderful. Happy birthday, Teddy. Thank you for joining us. All right. So we've got some answers here saying A for Poland. All right. This one's a little tricky. We've got red and white. So the colors won't necessarily give it away. Also, that blocky pattern for both of them. Mm, I don't know. 
I do think this one's interesting that the, that it's a, a different shape as well. What do we think here? We've got some Poland. We got some A's. All right. So the answer for this one is Poland. You guys are so smart. You got it again. So yes, looking at again the colors that didn't necessarily help us. The red and the white, but it's also got this kind of squared off, you know, kind of look to it there. Um, so yes, that is Poland. An interesting uh, Randall there. Here's the Canadian one. Of course, of course, that one's pretty obvious there with the maple leaf. Again, looks very similar actually. Again to New Zealand and to Australia with the blue and the white, uh, but the maple leaf dead giveaway. Those Canadians love their uh, maple leaves and their maple syrups up there. All right, now here is the last one, everyone. This one is going to be a little tricky. All right, so take a look at this one. Look at the colors, look at the patterns and the shapes here. Do we think this one is Kenya, type A, or Jordan, type B? Now in this one, again, the colors pretty much dead similar there. So do we think, just looking at this, you've also got stripes on both flags, no other identifying symbols or anything. So what do we think? Is this Kenya or Jordan, A or B? Oh, we're getting a mix now. We got an A, we got a B. What do we think, Kenya or Jordan? All right, Roxanne says Jordan. Ian has got a hunch on Jordan. All right. Any other last guesses here? Kenya or Jordan? This one's tricky, right? So you really got to know your countries. You got to know your roundels when you're flying around too, if you need to know these things. All right. So last few seconds here. Type A if you think this roundel is for Kenya or type B if you think this one is for Jordan. All right. And the answer is Kenya. Kenya. So with this one, you can kind of tell more with the thicker stripes and then the thinner white lines in between. All right. So again, it doesn't have that shield like the Kenyan flag, but also the order of the colors. It goes black, red, green. So from the outside in, that's how I think it makes the most sense. Here's the Jordanian one. So with that one, again, the order, black, white, green. And then it's got that very clear uh, red triangle with that um, seven pointed star, uh, that seven pointed white star in the red triangle. Uh, and again, the thicker lines like the flag too, but that one's very close. So we can see everyone that these roundels have very distinctive characteristics, right? That can um, help us to learn where they're from, uh, but some of them look pretty close. So you do have to know at a glance uh, what some of these are if you need to be able to identify them too. So I want to pause here, everyone, before we move on and see if we've got any questions. Any questions before we move on today about uh, roundels? Oh, are all roundel circles? So no, they aren't. They can be a variety of shapes. Uh, we just saw Poland, for example. It is more square shaped. And some are even uh, kind of, you know, the shape of like a shield almost. Um, there's also a triangle uh, or a cross as well. Uh, most of them are circles. Many of them are um, and of course, that makes sense. You think the word roundel, it's round like a circle. Uh, but there are a variety of other shapes too. So all kinds of different things. Good question. Any other questions? Do roundels always stay the same? No, they absolutely can change over time. Uh, just like how the American roundel, again, it changed. It started off, um, you know, with the, the star and then the red dot. And then they realized, oh, that's not a good idea. So they changed the dot. They got rid of it. Uh, and then later on, they added the red stripes in again. So um, they absolutely can change for different reasons. Um, you know, the, I mean, borders of countries change too. So countries disappear every day uh, or get created. So they always are coming up with new ones. People can change them. Um, the main thing is as long as you all are on the same page and you know that it's changed, um, that's really all that matters. <laughs> but yes, they definitely can change. Um, and, and Ian says the Philippines has a diamond. Interesting. There you go. So maybe that reflects the flag. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the culture of the country. All sorts of different symbols um, and shapes can be found on those roundels. All right. Um, and Teddy says, how does the roundel go on the plane? Is it a sticker? Um, it's usually painted. 
Uh, you know, it could be painted. It could be, you know, it could be. I guess you can get like a vinyl sticker, you know, kind of stick it on and then, you know, shellac over it too. Um, we're going to actually talk now a little bit about some of the stuff that's painted on planes though. But um, paint would be, I think, the thing that sticks it on there the best. So it's not going to go anywhere. Good question, Teddy. So everyone, we've learned that roundels act like logos, right? And they can help us to identify countries. But if we look at another plane that we have on the hangar deck here at the Intrepid, we'll notice that this one, the Fury, all right, this is a jet plane from the Cold War era. Uh, so this one came after the Avenger, which was done uh, from World War II. So this one takes a little bit of a different approach. It is not painted blue uh, in, that, in that camouflage kind of pattern there. Um, in fact, this one is primarily gray. All right, but you'll notice that it's got a very, very bright and bold lightning bolt painted across the side of it. You see that there, and it is pretty cool. Um, it was done on purpose, though, believe it or not. So we've got this big lightning bolt going across the side of it. Um, but but before we actually get to the lightning bolt point, I do want to point out again something else on it. Here's the backside of it a little more clearly. Um, that roundel on the backside of the Fury there. So this is what the United States, again, roundel looks like today. Similar to before the white star on the blue circle and those two uh, white stripes on the sides, but now it also has that layer of red across it as well. Uh, just not the red dot, <laughs> just got the red stripes on it now, which uh, does look a little bit more like our flag as well. Uh, something else uh, to point out actually about roundels as well is that sometimes you might want to show that uh, the plane belongs to a certain country, but it needs to maybe blend in a little bit, not be super obvious when it's flying around. Uh, you know, even if they're fast, sometimes they still want to still kind of be a little more secretive and blend in. So they actually have low visibility versions of the roundels where you can still see the shape, but it's all in just sort of a muted color, a gray or like a black kind of scheme there. So for example, the United States one, we just saw it in color, but now there it is, same pattern, same shape there and everything, but now it's just in that gray. Uh, Columbia, which we saw before that had that very bright yellow and blue uh, and red on it. Now it's just the outlines of it. And again, just the star there in black. And Dominican Republic actually kind of looks like a crosshair there, interesting, but just in uh, that kind of gray color as well just the low visibility versions of it. But going back to the Fury, everyone, that lightning bolt, that gray color, um, as the Navy used jets more and more, they actually started to limit the amount of paint that they painted on it because jets were meant to go fast, right? So all that paint added to it added weight. And it doesn't seem like it would be that much weight, but if you're painting something really big, it does add up. And in some cases it could add an extra 50 to 100 pounds. So instead of painting the whole thing you know, blue or whatever color, uh, they decided to just take some of that paint off and add more fuel. So they could go faster and do other things, maybe add some other you know, weapons as well. Now, why the lightning bolt? Well, pilots were able to add some design, add some flair to their planes to make them even more unique. Um, you can kind of think of it like athletes who maybe have some special hair or, you know, Troy Palomalu, since I'm a Steelers fan, uh, or, you know, you can think about, um, you know, that maybe they wear long sleeves or goggles or special socks or something like that. Uh, so these are ways that that will help them to be a little bit more individual on the field or on the court. Uh, so same thing here. This is why oftentimes they would paint things on their planes. Um, so you've got the lightning bolt here. Also on this plane here, this is the Skyhawk. Uh, this green symbol here. So these things represent the squadron that it is a part of. This is like a smaller team that flew together uh, within a team. Um, so everyone who came from the same ship, right? So this green thing here, if you look closely at it, what does it kind of look like, right? You've got this green streak across it. It's also got a little bit of a red uh, stripe on its back here. But if you look closely, it kind of looks like a lizard or an iguana, right? So as you could probably guess, the name of this squadron was the Green Lizards. Very creative, I know. Now here is their patch though. Check this out. This is really cool. This is the logo that they all got to wear on their clothes. This is their patch. So that is what their attack squadron logo looked like. Some people say it kind of looks like an alligator or maybe it's like Godzilla holding a trident, right? There's a sunset over the water. It's cool. It's really exciting. He's got teeth. He looks pretty fierce. 
But the one on the plane didn't really look quite that detailed, right? Yeah. All right. A little different. But that is because the artist, you know, he's, he's painting this on a few planes. This is a team within a team, the squadron. So he goes to paint it and he's like, uh, this is a little complicated to have to paint over and over again on a bunch of planes. So they needed something a little simpler, a little easier to replicate. So that is why the green lizards look like that on the planes. It's a little bit less intimidating just to see that kind of sweep of green there, but it's still pretty cool, I think. And of course, they still get to wear that really cool patch on their clothes too. Now, the Skyhawk is pretty special to the museum because it is the only plane that actually took off and landed from the Intrepid. We do have another one coming soon, the Sky Ray, but not yet. So as of right now, this is the only one that we have that actually is from the time that the Intrepid was in service. Um, all of the other planes that we have and that we've seen so far are types of planes that took off and landed, but this exact plane actually did, which is very cool. And you can actually see on the side, it says USS Intrepid Navy too. So that's where it's from. It's from our ship. Now there is a funny story about this plane. Uh, there were two different squadrons and they were going out on Liberty, which uh, basically means they had some free time. And they were going to land at an air base. And then each squadron had about 14 planes each, right? So one squadron goes away. And the other squadron one night, they went over, they stole one of their planes, the other ones, from the other squadron, and they painted over the squadron logo with their own. So when it came time to leave, they all left with their planes, but the other squadron is looking around and they're like, wait, we're missing one. Where's our last plane? They couldn't find it. Where'd it go? Until, of course, they realized, no, that is the plane. It was still there. They had just painted over it with the other team's marking. So not very nice, but still kind of a funny story then. <laughs> uh, so I want to pause again, everyone, before moving on and see if we've got any more questions so far. Squadrons, roundels, you name it. Any other questions today? Did the pilots paint the planes themselves? Yeah, so pilots would frequently paint the art on the planes. Um, we talked a little bit about squadron art, but also nose art in general. They'd paint on there just for fun to show a bit of their personality. Um, we'll see another fun one actually on a plane in just a little bit um, that, that has to do with the nose art there. Um, but they painted lots of interesting things like art. Um, they had animals and ladies and words and all kinds of things on the sides of the airplanes during wartime. It really helped them uh, to to keep them entertained. And Ian, yeah, nose art, exactly. Well, I'm not going to show you um, a really cool one in just a bit, actually, nose art. Any other questions? What are some other squadron pictures? Oh, sure, yeah. So there are a ton of uh, things that people used as their squadron logo. So you've got, again, animals. You saw, uh, like, the iguana, for example, but all kinds of animals. Um, weapons, you know, things like axes, um, shields. Um, I mean, you know, you think about something like a family crest, right? So it's got symbols that sort of mean something to the family's history, maybe. So you've got things like that with shields with different symbols on it. Um, you've also got scary things like devils. You've got um, Vikings, you know, with big Viking horns, dragons. Um, you also got things like um, chess pieces. So maybe, you know, they're playing the long game. Cartoon characters. Disney characters, actually, sometimes they would paint on there. You name it. They got really creative. Um, there actually was a card game, believe it or not, during World War II called um, Squadron Insignia. Very creative, again, with their name. Um, it was a bunch of matching Squadron Insignia on cards and some information about each of them. And then you had one card in the deck that was the enemy. And then you're supposed to go around, you're supposed to find the pairs of the matching Insignia art for points. And then whoever is left at the end with the enemy card, it's like Old Maid, I guess, if you've ever played that. Whoever has the enemy card at the very end has to deduct all of this extra amount of points. Um, so it's kind of interesting. And I can see how people, you know, back then might be really into learning about the different squadron art during World War II. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. So everyone, we're going to move on and take a look on our flight deck at a couple of other planes we've got. This is a very famous type of plane. Uh, you may have actually seen them flying around in our skies locally, um, looking a little different, though, a little different type of plane in particular. But this is a Blue Angels Tiger. This one was flown during the 50s and 60s, and they are a very special squadron of acrobatic pilots. 
So the Blue Angels do lots of special shows and exhibitions around the country to show off their skills and their techniques uh, because Navy pilots are very highly trained and really good at their job. Uh, and so they get to show off some of their skills as part of this team called the Blue Angels. So we've got a Blue Angels tiger on our flight deck. Uh, they are really well known specifically actually for flying in formation, doing lots of incredible flying feats and representing, again, just the very top skills of our Navy pilots. Um, last summer, I remember they had a whole exhibition where they flew around with the Thunderbirds, which are similar, but not the Navy version. Um, and, you know, flew around New York City to kind of cheer everyone up while we were in lockdown. Now, on the side of this particular plane, uh, you can see their insignia. So kind of like a roundel, but it's their logo or their symbol there. I can zoom up a little for you. That is what it looks like. So it actually has on the bottom an aircraft carrier. It says Naval Air Training Command around it. So that's what's in the gold part. And then in the clouds on the top, there are four Blue Angels planes flying in formation. That is what they're really well known for at this uh, you know, very tight flying formations. Um, another thing to notice here about it, though, again, is the colors, the blue and the gold, which are the official colors of the United States Navy's, uh, Navy. But these in particular are actually very specific shades for the Blue Angels. Um, the colors are called Blue Angels Blue, go figure, and the yellow is called Insignia Yellow. So again, very specific color scheme here. And again, this insignia, the symbol uh, that tells you who they are and what they're all about. Uh, another insignia that's neat to look at is on this plane. This is the Grumman Cougar. So this plane was from the 1950s. And if we look a little bit closer at this particular one, you can see this one looks like a pirate ship. This is the Jolly Roger sign. And it's actually a pretty common one, believe it or not. Uh, it's been reused a lot over time. There are a ton of different squadrons that have used this one, but only one Navy squadron at a time is allowed to use it. So if you are the Jolly Roger squadron, that is your logo. But if your squadron, for whatever reason, is decommissioned, then this Signia is up for grabs. And so another group can use it. Um, it's a pretty cool one. Again, it's a very old one. Definitely would have been in that card game that I mentioned. Um, but this is the Cougar. And as you can see, again, the Jolly Roger insignia on it on the side. Very cool. Very fierce. Uh, now up on our flight deck across from the Cougar, actually, we've got the Kafir. Now this one has a roundel on it. Again, remember, this one has to do with countries, the roundel. So let's take a closer look at this particular one. Looking at this, can anyone guess, tell me in the chat if you happen to know, what country do you think this roundel represents? This is not an American plane. All right. We have it up on our flight deck. What roundel, what country do you think this might represent? Looking at it here, we have a white circle and a six-pointed star. Oh, I see a couple of people, Thomas and Ian in the chat. Yes, you're saying Israel. I wonder what gave it away. There you go, very nice. So it is Israel, and you can see the flag of Israel. You can see that six-pointed star, the Star of David on the center of it. Uh, and so, yeah, makes a lot of sense that that six-pointed star would also be uh, on their roundel because that is a very, very key um, element of the flag and also of the culture in Israel as well. Uh, and fun fact, actually, Kafir, K-F-I-R, which is the name of the plane there, it translates into lion cub. Now, they are very powerful supersonic jets. And uh, if I go back, actually, this one is camouflaged as well. You can probably guess what type of terrain it's flying around. This one uh, is camouflaged to blend in with the desert. Makes less sense, that brown color there. Now, everyone, we were talking again about teams, right, within teams. Well, we've got this one here. This is another type of team we're looking at here. Now, the Sea Guardian, all right? This is the Sea Guardian. It's a helicopter, not an airplane. Let's look at the insignia that we see on the side here. There you go. This logo here, it's got the U.S. Coast Guard. All right, so it's another team that they might be playing for, the Coast Guard. Uh, and it's got, of course, the anchors as part of their insignia there. And it also says 1790 when it was founded. 
This particular Coast Guard helicopter uh, is from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. All right. It actually says it on the back underneath uh, where that was enlarged there. But these helicopters were used to save people from the water, the Coast Guard. Um, so you can see, of course, the Coast Guard insignia. And right next to it, you've also got the American Roundel. Now, this plane is also pretty interesting. This one on our flight deck is called the Air Maki, and it has some colors down the sides of it. Uh, let's take a look at the roundel for the country that it represents. All right. So, again, the same colors in that stripes there. Let me know what country you think this one comes from. The colors we have are red, white, and green. Now, there's a couple of countries that this one could represent if we think about it in terms of the flag. What do we think? Red, white, and green. What country do you think this one represents? Hmm. All right. So we got some guesses. It says Italy. It's a good guess. It's a good guess. Red, white, and green. Let's take a look. You're right. Red, white, and green. Just like the flag. There you go. Italy. Uh, and actually, this plane, the Air Maki, it is an Italian version of the Blue Angels. On the back of the plane, it says, and I'm going to butcher this, Frecce Tricolori. <laughs> it means tricolored arrows. And they do stunts just like the Blue Angels do. They even use colors in smoke. Again, you can see the red, white, and green. Um, and they train pilots in this particular plane that we've got on our flight deck. So the stripes on the sides and those three colored arrows, Frecce Tricolori. Ooh. It doesn't sound as good if I don't roll the tongue, right? Right, 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 glory. Um, that is um, just like, like I said, the Blue Angels, but for Italy. So, yes, that is the um, Italian roundel. Now, right across the way on our flight deck, we have another really cool insignia. Uh, this one is our Harrier jet. This is a very cool plane. It's actually got vents on the sides, all right, that can get angled down, which lets the plane go straight up. Isn't that really cool? Kind of look like fish gills on the side. Uh, but when we look at this particular one a little bit closer, that's also a very cool one. Looks like a playing card. Specifically, yes, Thomas, a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. Very good, a VTOL aircraft. Thank you. Uh, but this particular one here, the Ace of Spades. So this is actually one of the oldest known squadrons. They go back to World War I, the Ace of Spades. Uh, but of course, again, just like the Jolly Roger, many people have used it over the years. Many squadrons have used it over the years. Uh, but this one in particular was for squadron VMA-231. So the Ace of Spades. And then, of course, everyone, I mentioned this earlier, but we're talking about artwork. So, of course, I just have to show you our Crusader with that shark face on the front. This was painted like this by the pilot. And again, he did this both to differentiate between planes, but also just to make his plane look really cool and kind of fierce. Imagine flying alongside this plane and looking over and seeing all those big shark teeth. That might startle me a little bit. I actually just really don't like sharks, too. But a flying shark, Sharknado. Ah! Yeah, so this nose art, again, very, very popular on planes, especially around this time. Uh, but yeah, it's sucking in air in the front. It's a jet plane and it looks kind of like a mouth. So why not put some teeth on it? Looks like a shark in front of your plane. Now, um, if we look at this one as well, this is the Sky Raider. Now, this one is actually painted silver. It's done this way um, because when we got it and we restored it, we wanted to make it look original. When we got it, I think it was painted all white, actually. Um, but we wanted to make it look like it originally did. It's an older plane. But to make it the most original, it would actually just be plain aluminum on the outside. Just plain silver with no paint at all. Now, that would be very cool. Um, but... It's really hard on the plane because, of course, it's on the flight deck of the Intrepid. Here in New York, it rains, it snows, it's windy, it's gross, it hails. So, you know, the aluminum would start to corrode. We're on the, the water, right? The salt water, the brackish water coming in. So it would start to corrode. It would start to get rusty. And that wouldn't be so nice. So the museum decided to paint it gray to sort of make it look like aluminum, but also to protect the metal that's underneath it as well. So the paint in particular in this case isn't necessarily authentic to how it was, but also meant for preservation techniques, which is important as well. This one's also got a neat insignia if we look at it too, since we're here. This is a little closer look of this one. So what do we think this plane and this insignia here might represent? We see some birds. 
right? We see some baby birds and a nice safe nest on top of the world there. And then we see another older bird flying around the world with a helmet on its head. And on the bottom, it says testing division. So this plane, oh, this insignia, represents the fact that this plane was a prototype. This was a test plane of an attack bomber. So there's lots of clues that you can see uh, in these pictures. And Thomas's World Patrol, yeah, kind of, he's going around the world, checking things out, right? <laughs> so, um, but again, this testing division of Douglas Aircraft, um, that's what this particular plane um, was meant to do, the Sky Raider, um, which, is, which is cool. A very unique uh, prototype that we have. Uh, and of course, we do have another prototype of the space shuttle uh, as well nearby on our flight deck too. So everyone, um, before we wrap up for today, I want to see if we have any last questions uh, before uh, we wrap for the day. Any last questions at all? How close can the Blue Angels fly to each other? Oh, wow. So the Blue Angels are super cool. They are known, again, for their super tight formations. The closest that they get while they are in the air is 18 inches apart. That is just over one foot. That's probably about this far. You can see it on your screen, this far. Um, and that is when they are in their Diamond 360 maneuver, which is the uh, the four planes close together, just like on their insignia. So again, these pilots are extremely good. They fly in this tight formation really, really high, also very, very low. Uh, I think their lowest maneuver is something called the sneak pass, which is like 50 feet from the ground. And it's also the fastest one they do. They fly 700 miles per hour at 50 feet from the ground. Such precision. These pilots are amazing, which is just absolutely nuts. 700, feet, 700 miles per hour at just 50 feet uh, from, from the ground. Blows my mind. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, the Blue Angels, awesome. Anytime you get a chance to see them performing, it is such a treat. Uh, all right, uh, let me time for one last question. Why are some of the cockpits blue? Oh, excellent question. So the aircraft restorators um, have to make decisions. Actually, I will pull this back up so you can see it. Um, they have to make some decisions about, you know, things like the artwork on the planes that we have at the museum. You can see that blue cockpit at the top up here. Um, so again, the idea to paint rather than to just have the plain aluminum, these are things about preservation, right? So they try to paint them how they originally look, but sometimes, sometimes actually they decide to just leave it as it is to show their age. I know they're working on a helicopter where they're just going to leave the inside as it is. So some of it's kind of falling apart, uh, but the blue in particular, and as you can see here on the top of the Crusader, um, this is another one of those decisions, right? It's not really artwork that's done by the pilot. It's actually special paint that's used to protect the inside of the cockpit of the plane from the sun. Because again, these planes are out on the flight deck all day long for us all to see and enjoy at the museum, but there's a lot of sun coming in. So it's out there exposed to the elements all day. Uh, the pilots did not have the blue painted on the glass. They probably wouldn't be able to see out if they did that. Um, but again, this is why um, we have it here. It is to preserve and protect our planes, protect them from the elements. So our uh, restorators put that in to protect the insides of the cockpit. Great questions So good observations. All right, my friends. So if you have any other questions about any of our programs, you can feel free to reach out to us through our website, intrepidmuseum.org, or also through any of our social media platforms. I would like to thank you all so much for watching and playing along with me today in our Roundel Challenge. You all did excellent jobs. Uh, as you know, the museum has introduced a number of new live streams just like this one. So please do follow and subscribe to this channel or visit our website for the latest streaming schedule. Also, we have reopened to the public seven days a week again, so we'd love to see you on site at our museum as well if you are in the area where you can check out some of these amazing planes for yourself in person. Now, our next family program is going to be this Thursday in two days at 3 p.m. It's going to be Journey to Space, where we are going to talk about Intrepid's very unique connection to the space race and how we had to take a number of small steps closer to home before making that big giant leap all the way up on the moon. So once again, that is Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on our streaming platforms. If you did enjoy the program today, I do encourage you to go ahead and take a look in the comments or the description here. We would love to get your feedback on this or any of the past programs you've seen. You can go ahead and pop your thoughts into that form that's linked there. And lastly, I would like to invite you all to join us for one more very exciting exciting thing tonight. 
Here we go. I'm going to make this big so you all can see this. Uh, tonight at 6.30, the Intrepid Museum is going to be partnering once again with Atlas Obscura Experiences for an extremely rare, very exclusive look inside of our space shuttle enterprise. So you are going to get the opportunity to explore the inner workings of our spacecraft with our curator of aviation, Eric Thame. No one ever gets to see inside of this thing, guys. So if you sign up for this, you will not be disappointed. Do not miss this super exciting opportunity. You can find out more information and still register uh, through our website, intrepidmuseum.org, or directly through atlasobscura.com slash experiences. So be sure to check that out. Again, that is tonight, July 13th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, my friends. So thank you so much again for joining us today. And hopefully we will see you online for another Intrepid Adventure. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Maybe we'll see you tonight. Bye.